Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over debuff tracking and Voodoo for raiding in Hellfire Citadel. These are just some of the settings I use while raiding and are by no means what you need to be using. So play around with your options and settings and use this as a guide to help you figure out the best setup for your playstyle. My personal preference is to use a bright pink bar color change for healing debuffs that require my attention. If a fight has a lot of debuffs that I want to track, I'll try to relate the bar color to the debuff's visual, such that a shadow spell would be purple. And additionally, for things that don't require my active attention, I'll just use the icon with no bar color change. To customize your debuff tracking in Voodoo, open up the Voodoo options and click on the debuffs tab at the bottom. Then go to custom. From here, all you have to do is add the debuff name to the list, select your visual settings, and hit save. I'm now going to go boss by boss and add the debuffs I like to track to give you an idea of things you might want to look out for while progressing through Hellfire Citadel. As long as you have the ad management down, Hellfire Assault is mostly a cakewalk across all levels of progression, which can leave healers going, oh, it's dead already. However, there's still a couple of debuffs I like to track. Howling Axe so that I can shield the debuff targets, and Slam, which is a debuff put out by the Berserkers on the tank, so I can monitor how hard they're going to get hit, and more importantly, if the tank goes splat, I can be like, yo, that was you with your million stacks, not me. For Howling Axe, I'm doing a bar color change to brown, and for Slam, I'm just adding the icon, but make sure you select stacks for this as well, which I apparently did not do here. For Iron Reaver, I track Artillery, and I give it a pink bar color to make sure I'm shielding the tanks before they run out. I also track Unstable Orb, giving it a green bar color, and I again left off stacks here, but they should be included so you can see which people like to be BFFs and stand on each other all fight. Additionally, I like to track just the icon for Immolation Debuff along with its stacks because some people just really like to stand and fire. On Cormrock, I track just the icon for Fell Touch, so that if a tank randomly dies and tries to blame me, I can shoot them a big ol' nope. Seeing a trend here? I also track just the icon for Explosive Burst, so that I can keep the tank topped off, but also get away from the explosion in time. And finally, I track Foul Crush with a pink bar color, as that tank will need direct healing throughout the debuff. For High Council, I track Mark of the Necromancer and give it a pink bar color. Using the settings I have here, it will show you the time it's been up and the icon will change with the duration as well, making the right person easier to identify for dispelling. I also track the icon for Blood Boil with the stacks, which I again forgot because I'm real good at this shit. Basically if the ability stacks, you should track the stacks because I'll keep forgetting to select that option. And lastly for this fight, I track Fell Rage and give it a green bar color as that person will require direct healing. On Kill Rog, I track the icon for Shredded Armor because people like to blame stuff on healers when really the tank is messing up his active mitigation. And the other debuff I track is Heartseeker with a pink bar color as those individuals will require a lot of direct healing as long as the debuff is on them. Gorfiend has a lot of mechanics, but I really only find myself tracking two debuffs. First is Touch of Doom, which I give a purple bar color so I can shield those people before they run out and explode. And the second is Shared Fate, which gets a pink bar color so I can get quick shields on those people and watch them in case they need direct heals. Since I don't use one of the boss add-ons for Shadow Lord Iskar, I track quite a few of the debuffs to help me manage my attention on the fight. First off is Eye of Anzu with a reddish bar color so I know who is holding the eye. Next is Phantasmal Winds with a green bar color for quick passing of the eye to remove their debuffs. Third is Phantasmal Wounds with a pink bar color so I know which people need to be topped off. I also track the icon for Phantasmal Corruption to make sure that tank is holding the eye so melee doesn't get blasted by the AoE. And finally, I track Fell Bomb with a dark blue bar color for quick dispelling. For Sakrathar, I track the icon for Shattered Defenses and its stacks so that when people die and complain about not getting healed, I can kindly remind them that they're bad, not me. 
I also track the icon for overwhelming power to keep those people shielded and in case during a transition back to phase one, someone with a gift debuff gets it, I know they may need a tank CD or personal. Lastly for this fight, I track Gift of the Minari with a green bar because it's a long ass debuff and those people will need a bunch of healing. For Fell Lord Zakun, I like to track Latent Energy with a green bar so I can silently curse the person that gets hit by waves and causes a wipe. Additionally, I track the debuff Befouled with a pink bar so I know to directly heal those individuals. Lastly, I track Seed of Destruction with a dark blue bar in the hopes that by shielding those people I will somehow prevent them from killing each other when they inevitably run to the wrong spots and hit each other with their waves. On Zul'Harak, there's a lot of different debuffs you can watch, but currently I track four. First, I track the icons for Fell Touched and Void Touched, just in case tanks are taunt swapping incorrectly and trying to blame healers on not being able to manage the damage. I also like to track Fell Surge with the green bar and Void Surge with a dark purple bar to help make sure those debuffs are being dropped off in the correct spots. Moving on to Tyrant Velhari, I track Edict of Condemnation with a dark purple bar to keep that target topped off. I also track the icon for Seal of Decay and its stacks on the tank to focus my absorbs properly and once again to call bullshit if they die from improperly handling the debuff and try to blame it on healers. Additionally, I track Touch of Harm with a pink bar so I know who requires direct healing and to monitor them in case they need the debuff dispelled. And lastly for this boss, I track Font of Corruption with a light blue bar to make sure everyone including myself is moving in and out properly with the debuff. On the next boss, Manoroth, even though I can't dispel it, I like to track Curse of the Legion with an orange bar to make sure that the person is shielded to help mitigate the damage on the removal of the debuff. And as you probably guessed, I also track the icon for Puncture Wound, just in case the tank misses his act of mitigation, takes a butt ton of damage, and then wonders if we should be using two Disc Priests for the fight. And lastly for this boss, I track Manoros Gaze with a dark blue bar to aid me with positioning and healing on those targets. And that brings us to the final boss, Archimonde. While there's definitely a lot you can choose to monitor in this fight, for now I just track three debuffs. First is Shackled Torment, which I track with a dark purple bar to keep hills and shills on the target as we wait to break the chains. The last two debuffs I track are Rot Chaos and Focused Chaos, both with a pink bar, to make sure I'm shielding those targets to help mitigate the damage from the laser burst. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys found this guide helpful and maybe share in the bitterness of being blamed for stuff that isn't our fault. If you have any questions about debuffs on these fights, feel free to leave them in the comments below and have fun raiding.